Well, the eighth most populous country on the planet is going to polls in a matter of few hours. Bangladesh is all set to conduct the nationwide parliamentary elections. Nearly 2,000 candidates are vying to secure their seat of power. Now, let us get you up to speed with all the latest updates from Dhaka and all the other places of interest in Bangladesh. The election material has been distributed at various locations in Dhaka to election officials. Nearly 1.6 million people, half of whom are secure. Security personnel will oversee the election. Over 119 million registered voters are eligible to vote in more than 42,000 polling stations. Sunday's voting comes amid an increasingly polarized political culture led by two powerful women. The current Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina is expected to come back to power and the former Premier Khalid Azia, who is an opposition leader, is currently under house arrest. Amid the preparations, the opposition is seeking to boycott and disrupt the elections with a general strike. The opposition has begun a 48-hour nationwide strike and Zia's Bangladesh Nationalist Party and other opposition groups are boycotting. They claim the elections wouldn't be free and fair under Sheikh Hasina. Critics have accused Sheikh Hasina of systematically suffocating the opposition by implementing repressive security measures. জনগণ কে আবেদন জানিয়েছি আমরা যে আপনারা এই এই হরতাল পালন করুন এই নির্বাচন বর্জন করুন সেই জন্য আমাদের নেতা কবরে সেইভাবেই তারা তাদের কর্মসূচি পালন করবে এবং আমাদের প্রতিবাদটা আমরা বিশ্বের কাছে জানালাম আমাদের বাংলাদেশ জাতির কাছে জানালাম এবং জাতিও আজকে প্রতিবাদ করছে সেটাই হবে আমাদের হরতাল the opposition demanded Hasina to step aside and let a neutral caretaker government administer the polling but the government insisted there were no provisions in the constitution for such a move. Sia's party claims that more than 20,000 opposition supporters have been arrested. The Sheikh Hasina administration has said that those figures were inflated and denied arrests were made due to political leanings. Instead, the arrests were made for criminal charges such as arson and vandalism. Troops have also been deployed across the country to assist when needed under the supervision of the magistrates. This is a common practice in Bangladesh during general elections. About 300 foreign observers, including more than 70 foreign journalists, have been authorized to monitor and cover the election. And for more on this, we're now being joined by Professor Imtiaz Ahmed, Professor of International Relations, University of Dhaka. Uh, Professor Ahmed, thank you very much indeed for talking to us this evening. How do you see this election panning out given the scale of violence and arson that we've seen in Bangladesh? Uh, thank you very much. Well, we have to wait uh, uh, for tomorrow. Uh, in terms of violence, uh, I think uh, since uh, we, you know, map uh, violence uh, throughout Bangladesh and we have the largest data on violence of last 12 years, um, I have to say that the violence is relatively less. Uh, although, you know, any death is, is bad, but compared uh, to 2001 election, which was held under caretaker government, I'm afraid that violence was really, really high. Uh, so compared to previous elections, uh, up until now, uh, we still have to wait. Uh, up until now, uh, I would say violence has been relatively less. So you say that violence has been relatively less, even though the opposition, of course, has asked for now that 48-hour strike as well. And the opposition says it will boycott the elections. Does that in any sense uh, give, you know, Asina's perceived re-election win less legitimacy? No, uh, I'm afraid, you know, uh, their call for uh, strikes or hortals uh, uh, have not really materialized. None of their hortals uh, have materialized. Now, in, in Bangladesh, uh, if you really want to change things, uh, historically, we have seen that millions of people have to come out on the streets. And not only in Dhaka City, uh, they have to come throughout Bangladesh. Uh, and then only the stakeholders uh, would take, uh, you know, cognition of it and try to do something. I'm afraid uh, up until now, the opposition parties have failed to bring millions of people come out on the streets. And uh, as I say, the hotels have not really metalized. None of their hotels have metalized. Uh, you know, there has been, you know, some incidents here and there, but it's so negligible. You know, after all, it's the eighth largest country in the world. But uh, millions of people have not uh, come on the streets uh, to their side. And, and that has been probably the biggest weakness uh, of the opposition parties uh, thus far.
Right. And how do you see uh, Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina's own career pan out, given the fact that she is seeking a fourth term in office? Um, and by and large, her popularity on the global front remains for her adept you know, diplomacy. Uh, worldwide, she's seen as a powerful leader. Yeah, I, I think she she managed uh, the, uh, the global community pretty well. Uh, yes, uh, uh, she had uh, or Bangladesh uh, government had some hiccups with the United States. But, uh, you know, given the fact that the whole world is transforming into multipolar world and there are several polars in this, uh, you know, new kind of world that uh, we are witnessing. So we are not in the stage of the 70s or even early 80s where, you know, you had the unipolar uh, and, uh, you know, one particular superpower to decide. Now, here you have several polars. So what I think uh, the Prime Minister has succeeded uh, in impressing upon particularly uh, three big countries, of course, India, and then China, and also uh, Russia. And of course, J Japan, I would also say, in, in many ways, uh, is with uh, this particular, uh, is with Sheikh Hasina's government. So on the whole, I think she has managed uh, pretty well Yes, uh, the United States, uh, uh, I think, uh, had some, uh, you know, uh, different way of looking at things. But uh, if you take uh, last uh, 48 hours or last three, four days, uh, some of the, you know, uh, you know, some of the news that are coming out from the United States and some of the published news, uh, it looks like uh, they have realized also uh, that maybe the approach that, that they took uh, did not really help. Uh, strengthening uh, democracy, it polarized uh, the major political parties uh, further. So I think they will be doing some course correction in the future. Mm -hmm. Right. It's important, Professor Ahmed, that you say that that you know Sheikh Hasina is a political figure who has uh, been able to have a relationship, a good one, with both India and China and Russia. That is a remarkable feature in itself. Uh, I'd like to thank you at this point uh, for joining us on the show. Thank you.